Hey guys, welcome to episode number 321. Today is Tuesday, so I have another tank tip for you. And today I wanted to talk about reticulated or open cell polyether filter foam. Everyone probably has this stuff in their aquarium or in their fish room somewhere, but most people probably don't know exactly how it's made. Uh, or exactly how it works. So I wanted to walk through that real quick. Now everyone's familiar with the uh, the sheets of filter foam, the preformed shapes of filter foams. They're in uh, your canister filters. They're in your sump systems. They're all over the place. They're great for mechanical and biologic filtration. Everyone knows all that stuff. But here's how it's made. It's actually an interesting process. It's a chemical process where multiple different ingredients are mixed and it creates, who would have thought, foam. It's a bunch of bubbles and uh, that chemical reaction kind of spills out of the reaction chamber onto a, uh, a floor that has walls and essentially it's kind of like a volcano of foam that's being kind of diverted in a controlled fashion down a table and essentially what happens is as that reaction is going on it creates all kinds of bubbles just like a giant bubble bath and uh, as that reaction kind of fizzles out those bubbles actually start to solidify into what you see here which is the finished foam product and then by the time it gets to the end of the table they can just cut it off and uh, there you go you can grab that foam and uh, do with it what you please however most foams look something like this they're actually complete encapsulated bubbles there's an air pocket inside of each of these bubbles that's called closed cell foam and uh, obviously that stuff doesn't work very well for aquariums. It works fine for beds and cushions and mats and chairs and everything else, um, you know, in the textile world and whatnot, but it doesn't work well in, in the aquarium world because you need the water to be able to get through, you need as much surface area as possible, and that's where the word reticulated comes from. That's where the word open cell comes from. Reticulation is actually a process which involves heat and pressure, and it takes this foam after it's been dried and it comes off of this assembly floor. It applies heat and pressure to that foam, and basically what it does is it heats up all of those walls in between the bubbles, and uh, it basically pops them. So what you see here, which kind of makes sense now that you look at it, is a bunch of bubbles that have been popped, essentially. And what you're left with is kind of the exoskeleton where all of those bubbles kind of uh, touched each other. And uh, the plasticky material was thicker in those places than it was everywhere else. So that's what remained and the rest kind of got burnt, burnt away and heated away. Um, now obviously there are different size bubbles and uh, that's what people refer to as PPI or pores per inch and uh, oftentimes it will go from 10 pores per inch which is this, 20, 30, it can go all the way up to 100 uh, but for aquariums these are basically the three that work really well. If you're doing something with very small fish, very small fry you might want to go with 30 or 40. Uh, if you're doing stuff with larger fish, you don't want it to get clogged up as easily. There's a lot of waste being produced, like a bubble filter or something like that. You might want to go with like a 10 or a 20 uh, PPI foam. So anyways, that's kind of a look at the foam making process, where your foam comes from. Um, I got these pieces of foam here from Swiss Tropicals. Um, you can also pick some up uh, at Angels Plus. Those are two very good retailers, online retailers for uh, open cell or reticulated polyether filter foam. So go check those guys out. Hope you learned a little something and I'll see you guys later.